All right, all right. My first guest tonight is a world class master communicator who works with successful entrepreneurs and speakers, and she helps them take their professional pitching and speaking skills to the next level. She has over 25 years of experience and was featured on season eight of ABC's Shark Tank. And she's here tonight, and we're getting one on one right now. Precious William here. <laughs> you know we already gonna set it off. <laughs> I I see you ready to set it off. You you got your glorious pink on tonight. Oh yeah, you know this is this is part of the brand. This is what we do. Uh, okay, tell me about the pink brand. You got on pink lipstick. You like you trying to catch something tonight, girl? Come on. <laughs> I stay catching. Yes. Ah! You know, listen, always, all day, every day. You Let know, me find day. out you a fisher woman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, uh, so I, you know, my company is Perfect Pitches by Precious, and you know, I've, I'm I'm a bold personality. I'm really in your face. I'm very different from most of the people who just go out there and pitch their businesses and just give you the same song and dance. I like to say things that are kind of slightly outrageous, but also in a way that you know attracts attracts you to what it is that I do or what my clients do and everything like that. So hot pink is just very like, ooh, that's just not that's just not normal. That's just wow right there. And so Yeah, that's, that's walking by the, the grocery store looking like, oh, I see they got some pink salmon down the corner. Let me grab some of that. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. All right. So, Precious, let's talk about your journey. Um, we know you as the Killer Pits Master. Uh, you, you've been seen on season eight of Shark Tank, which is one of my favorite shows. And let's talk about how you got to that point, because everybody thinks about success. They think about, hey, I want to get at the top. But what's the what's the actual roadmap to getting there? And everybody's roadmap will be different. But I want to talk about your roadmap. How did you get to where you are right now? Where does Precious start from? Where was she born? I was born in Fort Knox, Kentucky. My my parents were in the army together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I didn't speak still. I didn't start speaking professionally until I was 16. You know, I was grew, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. And I know you can hear my accent. It hasn't gone anywhere after all these years. Nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. Nowhere. And I've been to college, law school and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I grew up with a very, uh, very abusive mother. I grew up with a drug addict father. So I know Joe Osteen always talks about in the natural. In the natural, I, 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 I couldn't see this coming. But, you know, when I was 16 years old, I went to go live with my grandparents. And my grandmother said, you have a way of speaking that's just so different. And, you know, Oprah's going to know your name and everything. I'm looking at my grandma like, my own parents didn't want me. What, what, what? <laughs> and my grandma was like, you're going to do it. And so at 16 years old, my first speaking engagement was before the mayor of the city of St. Louis. My second was before the governor of Missouri. And, you know, when you're young, you don't pay attention to that kind of talent and, and, and ability. Went off to Spelman College, had a full scholarship to Spelman College, uh, had a great time. I graduated 20 years ago, which I cannot believe. Uh, and went off to law school, got kicked out of Georgetown in 2002. And uh, started over at Rutgers in 2003, had a nervous breakdown in 2004 and somehow finished in 2006, took the February 2007 bar. Long story short, I did not like being an attorney. I was like, if I got to do this for 40 years, this is not going to work for me. I, I can only wear so many hot pink and hot purple suits to court without people just being like, this is ridiculous. And so I met a very... Uh, a very famous actor, and uh, we started dating. I was 327 pounds. I know that sounds still shocking to this day. I was 327 pounds. And he said, I got him with the perfect pitch. And I was like, ooh, okay. And I wanted to start a lingerie company called Curvy Girls Lingerie. And no one would don't, no one would invest in my company. Nobody. They were like, you're too fat, you're too black, and you don't have an Ivy League degree. And so I went to the library, and I met a woman who said she won $50,000 pitching. And I was like, word? She gave me her pitch, and I was like, I'd smoke you. And I knew I would. So first opportunity I got, I went to an event that I could not afford. Walked up to the producers, who, media sponsors uh, at MSNBC. And I just threw out a pitch just to see if it would work. And it did. And they were like, you know, you can be on our show. Come be on our show. And it was elevator pitch. And so I remember 
going on this show, scared to death. Nobody believed I could do it. And in 54 seconds, I walked away with a big investment in my company. So I went from negative $400 to $500,000 in 54 seconds. And so they told me enter pitch competitions. I did it. And out of 14 tries, I became a 13-time national champion. Okay. Now, now I, I got to start from the top. Men don't care how much you weigh if they like you. They really don't. You know what? I, I, I can look back and be like, you are so right. But at the time, at the time, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I re- honestly, I didn't know. And, you know, people always say, oh, big girls need love, too. I'm like, yeah, but how come when I was, you know, talking to people about it, they were like, yeah, you, you're fat. No one's going to no one's going to invest. Da, da, da. And then when I'm actually on Shark Tank and just going in on Shark Tank, just going in on the sharks and just giving them the best that I got. I remember Robert Hershevik said to me. Watching you was like watching a master at their craft. <laughs> Word? Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so when when you talk about developing a pitch, let's let's talk to the audience about what a pitch is, because a lot of people are looking at. Well, hey, you know, I know how to talk. I think I know how to talk, but <laughs> it's a difference in crafting information in a certain amount of time. That you're gonna get across, that's gonna grab. I'm gonna come here, you know, grab yeah. somebody's yeah. attention and captivate them to a point that they are interested in what you have to say. So let's let's define for our audience, our listening audience, and our viewing audience what a pitch actually is. Well, a pitch is something you actually do every day. You just don't even know it. What you're doing is you're saying something to get someone interested in you taking the next meeting with you, getting to the next step of the journey with you. When you're talking about that no good man and no good woman in your life, you're pitching. When you're talking about that job opportunities, like all of those are pitches. But when you are pitching for like, when you're pitching for investments, when you're pitching to the media, when you're pitching at networking events, you want to say something that truly stands out and makes people want to listen to you more or book an appointment, go to your website or something like that. Um, Do you mind if I demonstrate uh, what I say at networking events that really kind of knocks people out? Well, Preston, that's why we brought you here. Come on. Oh, well, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. All right. Raise your hands if you want to be a bad bitch with the power pitch. Fellas, raise your hands if you want to be a bad man with a master pitching plan. I'm so. (laughs) You come to the right place. My name is Precious Williams, and I'm the proud founder and CEO of Perfect Pitches by Precious. And I'm a 13-time national elevator pitch champion who's also appeared on Shark Tank, CNN, Wall Street Journal, Forbes Magazine, movies and documentaries around the world. I'm also a corporate trainer for some of the biggest companies in the world like Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft, NBC Universal, Intuit QuickBooks. But before I did all of that, I was standing in your shoes. So if you want investor dollars, if you want to know where them dollars at, come see me. If you want to know what to say at a networking event that truly makes you stand out and make and get rid of those business cards, come see me. If you are interviewing for the job of your dreams and you do not know what to say to get them to say you're hired, come see me. And if you also want to pitch to media and you have no idea how to do it, I can show you how to do that with little to no money because I had to do that for myself and my clients. Again, my name is Precious Williams. I am the killer pitch master and I will sit here to help you what slay all competition. So you've already seen the rest. Now see the best. My name is Precious Williams. <laughs> <laughs> founder and CEO for the pitches by Precious. Thank you. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> No, but at the end of the day, when you when you think about a pitch, when you hear most people pitch, they're like, this is the name, my name, name of my company. Da, da, da. It's so boring. So what you want to do when you're pitching is you want to interrupt the natural pattern that most people will do. And so why do I start off by saying, ladies, ladies, I want your attention. I want all like Tupac. I want all eyes on that. And then I want to say something that's kind of be like, whoa, she really just said that. It wakes people up. It's like, whoa. So you want to start off with a startling statistic, a quote, a question, something that breaks up the monotony of what everybody else is saying. Number two, you want to tell a story, no matter how short or how long of a time you have. You want to give them something to sink their teeth into. Like people know that I'm the killer pitch master. If you remember nothing else, you're like, killer pitch, bad pitches and power pitches. You're going to remember that. You want to give them something that's just like, wow, 
I'm going to remember that. Number three, you want to be bold and unexpected. Show up and show out whether you are, you know, in virtual or you're you're physically there. Wear a power color that represents your brand, a brooch, something that truly stands out about you. And don't be afraid to just go all the way in. Don't forget also to have a powerful call to action. Make sure that they know what to do after they hear you speak. Do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to check out your new book? Do you want them to do something and make it very clear what you want them to do? Some people, when they listen to me, they immediately go to LinkedIn or they go to my website or they, you know, go and get a book or something of mine. So always do that. And another thing I I want to definitely stress, and I didn't do this in in that particular pitch, is ask big. If you want something, ask for it because you never know who's in the room that can make it happen. I promise you, there have been places that I've been and I'll just say at the end, oh, I'd like to speak here. I'd like to do that. And people just make it happen. So don't be afraid to ask big. Don't ask small. Don't ask the bare minimum. Ask for it all. And if they say no, you can negotiate down. But never, you can never negotiate up. So when it comes to pitching, just know you do it every day. Get sharper and sharper and only focus on the things that really, really matter. It's not the whole buffet. It's a juicy morsel. Mm -mm -mm. A juicy morsel of more to come. Did did you say juicy morsel? It's a juicy morsel. You don't listen. We're not giving them the whole plate. You're at your grandma's house. Grandma's cooking. She's cooking it up in the crock pot. She got it all going. And you put all of that stuff on a plate. But that first bite will set the tone and decide whether you want to have another bite. So it's a juicy morsel. It's not everything that you do. Because I do a whole lot more than what I said that I do. But when I started, I wanted to be the killer pitch master. And that's Ooh. all I want to focus on. And then when you get known in that and you created your lane, people can see you in other places too. All right. So so we want it to be a, a, a more sti- morsel. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I heard was moist morsel. So. I said uh, juicy. I, I, you, you want it to be juicy. Okay. I, I want it to be moist. You want it juicy. I want it moist. Okay. Oh, we can have it our way. All right. All right. So, so, so oh, let, let's, well, let's recap. Let's recap. Number one thing you said they want to do is what? I want you to interrupt the pattern that most people will do when they're pitching. Okay, so, interrupt the pattern. A, a statistic, something that makes sure all eyes are on you. So okay. interrupt the pattern. Number two, you want to be a master storyteller. Tell a story in what it is that you do. Something that makes you above and beyond what everybody else is going to do. Number three, you want to be bold and unexpected. Show up and be ready to show out. I like to show up in pink, whether it's hot pink, light pink, whatever. I'll show up in something that represents your brand and truly makes you stand out in a sea of just average, random or ordinary. Make sure you make sure you have a powerful call to action. What do you want them to do after listening to you? And don't be afraid to ask big for what it is you want. You want to speak somewhere. You want to meet this person. You want to do something. Ask for it and it can happen. Right. So right. ask, I'm going to ask little and, so, and have your expectations up there. OK. And those are great. So so why do you think people don't ask for what they want? And that that could be just life in general, not just right. a pit. People don't ask for what they really want. Why you think that is? One reason I think it is, is just because we've been told to just take what we can get. Right. Ah. But when you ask for what you want. Chances are, even if they say no, there's a respect given, right? There's a respect given. I don't know about you. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional, international professional speaker. Sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, oh, we'd like you to speak here. And, you know, my next question is, that's really great. So uh, what's your budget? Because here are my rates. <laughs> here are my rates. And if they can't meet that, what can we do? What, what can we do to make it? You want to buy more books? Here's my honorarium, but buy more books or something like that. So always be ready to negotiate. But if you start high, people got to respect the gang. So even if they even if like, man, I can't believe she said that. Yeah, I did. Because if I look like somebody else, this wouldn't even be a question. So mm-hmm. I'm going to ask for it. Just like being on Shark Tank. I did. You know, I've had five of my clients appear on Shark Tank and successfully murder the gang. So when I went when they came to me, I was ready. I was ready for the opportunity. And in asking for all the things that has happened, like the LinkedIn's, the Google's, the Microsoft's and everything like that. In fact, I just shot a MasterCard campaign for Priceless. How did that happen? I'm always in the zone of asking my network and letting them know piece by piece. This is what I'm doing right here. Can you introduce me to somebody? Can you do this? And most people tell you, oh, I can't believe you asked. If I don't ask, I don't get fed. 
I'm an mm. entrepreneur for real. And so right. I'm going to ask, I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to be persistent because persistence beats resistance. And when you see someone like me, you, or anyone who's just really out there being visible, just know that we weren't wallflowers about it. We didn't just accept what was given. You know, power doesn't, power doesn't concede. You take it. You take it. I always tell people, go after what you want or you'll have to settle for what you can get. Ooh, I believe in that. Like it's hot. I believe in that. So, so, so in essence, when we're looking to pitch for things that we desire, no matter what the medium is, we got to have confidence, correct? You got to have confidence. You got to, you got to ask for what you want. You got to be bold and confident. You got to tell a story. Tell people why telling a story is so vitally important to, to what, what you're trying to present to people. A story is vitally important because that's how we learned growing up. It really is. People would tell us when you're watching these shows, they're still telling a story. There's there's a beginning, a middle and an end. So you just leave, you you want to do what people already know. People understand how you started. What got you here? How did you how did you even come up with that? How did you come up with bad bitches and power bitches? Oh, I get it now. Oh, and they're just like, oh, I'm in. I'm in there. I'm, I'm just in. And also, too. Not every story is for everybody. So expect that everybody's not going to rock with you. And that's perfectly fine. You know, I, I don't expect everybody to love me. I do respect you. Respect me, though. I I respect, but I don't expect you to like me. And when you have women who are just powerful and are confident in who they are and have heard every no under the sun and they kept going anyway, or they got bricks thrown at them and they used it to build their empire. This is just part of the game. Everybody don't like Oprah. I don't think Oprah's tripping. <laughs> Did you say bad bitches? Bad, bi bad bitches and power pitches for women entrepreneurs and speakers only. Okay, okay. <laughs> do. You know how much you know. It was such a fight for years about that time. Fight, and, and then I remember I met Sharon Monet hashtag Pen Legacy, and she made me write the book in two and a half months. Mm. We put it out there. I didn't expect it to go number one. I didn't expect for Forbes magazine to review it. I didn't I didn't expect ha Billboard and Times Square. I didn't expect any of that. And that told me the power of being controversial, not for controversy's sake, but also standing out. If I wrote a book that said the art of the killer pitch, <laughs> as loud as it is gregarious as I am, oh, you want something bold. And so the same people that told me they wouldn't buy bought it. All the companies I've ever spoken for, trained at, bought it. Uh -huh. You can tell my more how like bought it, you know. So trusting yourself and knowing that there are a lot of people who are going to say they wouldn't do it, and they will. They will. How many people say they don't read gossip and they don't do gossip? And you, they start a magazine like this at the grocery store. Oh, word! That's what. I, trust me. Trust me. Yeah. All right, princess. So along your journey, I. And people may look at you now and say, uh, she's got it all. She's done it all. Uh, but there's still some things in you that you 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 don't feel like you've you've gotten to that mark it, 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 it yet. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things about doing what I do is bringing people like yourself on and our next guest to help the listeners get off the fence. I enjoy myself helping people get their ass off the fence. Mm -hmm. And so so when you look at this journey of yours from where you came to where you looked in, looking to go, what are the things that you are afraid of? Mm, you went there. OK, I did. Oh, I, 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 I I'll there. Let's, there. Go. Let's go there. Let's go. Let's go there. Up until yesterday, I was afraid to ask my network to help me become a New York Times bestselling author. Where did you, what do you think that fear came from? How dare I? I've done a lot, but how dare I want to want to reach that high? Um, I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not Les Brown. I'm not Lisa Nichols. I'm none of those people, but I am Precious Williams. And I have to remember that when I think that I can't, I envision my grandmother with the eighth grade education who pushed me. And that's why I'm here today. And so this morning I made a video. And I sent it out to my network. And the orders came in and like, how can I help you? And I was like, no. Mm. Um, I knew since I was five years old, 
that I'm supposed to host a, a talk show. I used to watch Sally, Jesse, Raphael, and Phil Donahue. This is way back in the day, before mm-hmm. I remember Oprah. I know that's what I'm supposed to do. I know it, right? Mm-hmm. And so as afraid as I am, I've hosted shows here in New York, you know, like uh, public access and stuff like that, but I'm meant to do it big. I'm afraid, but I'm ready. You know what I mean? I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And also so, just to stick up. Uh-huh. So this is what I'll say to you. Fear, we've always been told, is false evidence appearing real, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, they lied. They lied big time about that. Fear is actually real. What you have to do is pinpoint your fear. Where is this fear coming from? And then you don't have to. I believe it's not false evidence appear real. It's factual. OK, it's <laughs> factual, factual. <laughs> OK, because here's the thing about it. The fear that you're experiencing right now, Precious, is real. Is it not? It's not made up. No, it's real. It's real. You don't have to, you have to be honest with yourself about the fear, why you have it, where it derived from, but you don't have to reside in the fear because all the things you've accomplished are the things that's going to help catapult you to where you want to ultimately be anyway, whether that be talk show hosting, New York Times bestsellers list, Wall Street bestsellers list, whatever list you want to be on. Your ass got to start with within yourself. You got to ask yourself, why not precious? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you have to learn how to mute your mind. Because see, your mind's going to tell you all types of things that's going to try to derail you from, if you don't believe it, nobody else outside of you going to believe it. True so that. you got to believe that you belong, that you're going to accomplish the things that you set out to accomplish. If you don't go after what you want, you're going to have to settle for what you can get. And doing nothing <laughs> accomplishes absolutely choice. nothing, okay? But doing something changes everything in your life. And I want you to know today that you don't have to sit on the fence of uncertainty. You don't have to sit on the fence of fear. You don't have to let your fear frustrate you. But you can get your ass off the fence today, precious. <laughs> Love you can it. get off the fence today. So, so if people want to get in touch with you, how can they connect with you online? You can connect, you all can connect with me in a variety of ways. There's my website, www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. On LinkedIn, I am Precious L. Williams, Killer Pitch Master. On Facebook, I am at Perfect Pitch P. On Twitter, I'm at Perfect Pitch P. And on Instagram, I'm at Perfect Pitches P. You can go to YouTube and you can find me under Precious L. Williams. And also, if you're interested in purchasing my books, you can go to my website, perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. Go to the Work With Me page and see my books. And also my third book, Pitching for Profit, The Bad Bitches Playbook to Convert Conversations into Currency, debuts on April 13, 2021. And so you can go to Amazon and get it in pre-sales. You can go to my website and you can get a hand-signed copy when it comes out. So that's how you get in contact with me. And I look forward to hearing from you all. All right, Preston, thank you so much for coming on Off the Fence. Uh, Thank you so much for helping our audience get off the fence when it comes to their pitches. And thank you for allowing me to help you get your ass off the fence. I love the way you said that. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Preston, we'll see you later. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just now. I have the radio on the telly.